This is part one of the practice test, and we're going to go through uh, all of the problems here. Uh, first item is to save the file on your desktop with the name practice test part one, which is the current name, and then append your first and last name onto the end of it. So let's go to our file tab and do a save as. And we want to go to the desktop. And we want to save the name here. So, um, hyphen, first name, last name. Click on save. And then these apply to sheet one uh, or down here. And we want to merge and center the text in A1. And I want to set the font from uh, to 10 point for Dana. And I want to make that text uh, title that I just merged. So we'll do two things this time. Um, set the whole thing to 10 point for Dana. Just type in the first few letters there and tab out and change the size to 10. And then we're going to take this and we're going to change the cell style up here to title. So we have done these. Let's just mark them here. Whoops. And then go to row four and make the text uh, heading three. That's another cell style here. Okay, and then we want to turn on the wrap text going across row four there. That is up here. Okay. Set the height of row four to 50. Okay, the easy way to do this is just right click and choose row height and type in the number 50 there. And we can mark that off. Calculate the total purchase value by multiplying the shares by the cost per share. Okay, so total purchase value is this. So it's formula equals. And I want to run multiply shares by so let's multiply with an asterisk here, the purchase cost per share. And I get 31,000. And we can fill that in later. Okay, calculate the total current value by multiplying shares by the current cost per share. Okay, so let's, uh, current value is going to be the number of shares over here times the current cost per share, which is F. Five unit key, and uh, let's go back to our instructions here. Calculate the profit or loss by subtracting the total purchase value from the total current value. So it's going to be total current value minus total purchase value. Equals this minus this. And hit enter. And since the value went down by 7,000, it's a loss of 7,000, okay? Um, I want the sum of the total purchase value, and I want the sum of the total current value, I want the sum of the profit or loss, so that's going to be easy to do. We can just go down to the bottom of those columns. First of all, let's fill this in all the way down, and then go down to the totals here. And uh, we can actually do this all at once. Uh, let's do an auto sum, and then just to double check, let's look at the formula here. It's G5 to G34. It's got an extra cell in there. I don't know if that's a big deal because it's an empty cell. Whoops, just an escape there. 
Um, and then the same thing on these. Uh, it goes to row 34. It starts on row 5, which is where our data is. So we're good. Um, and that takes care of everything on this first set of instructions for sheet 1. And we've got some more over here. And let's make this a little bigger here so we can see what's going on. And I want the percent increase by finding the increase, dividing it by the total purchase value. So let's go back up here. Increase would be the profit or loss divided by the total purchase value here. But we should get a negative number for that. So it's gone down um, between uh, 20 and 25 percent. So that's between one fifth and one fourth. And um, seven is between one fifth and one fourth of thirty-one thousand. So we probably did that right. And uh, calculate each stock's percent of the total portfolio by dividing the total current value by the total current portfolio value, which is the bottom of column A. So, uh, what percent is this number of? So I got to divide by the number down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to copy that formula. When I do, I want to always divide by what's in H35 here. So I need to put the dollar signs in and make that an absolute cell reference. Okay. And then let's take those two formulas and let's copy them all the way down as well. Okay. And let's go back to our instructions over here. And we just did the first two here. And then I want to calculate uh, the sum of the percentage of total portfolio column and put the result in the totals row. And that should give me 100% because they should all add up to 100% of my, uh, that would be this one right here. Okay. So I want to do an auto sum on that one as well. And uh, on this one, I'll just I'll fix it so it doesn't include that blank column, but it's not really a big deal. Leave that empty cell or that empty cell there, and it should add up to one. And let's mark that off. In the note column, I want a plus sign if there's a profit, and a minus sign if there's a loss. Okay. Well, profit would be a positive number, which would be greater than zero, and like this one, and a loss would be a negative number. So. Um, I want to do a formula here, and we'll do this the easy way. We'll do our logical test book here and uh, do the if function. And our logical test is, um, is the profit or loss uh, greater than zero? And if it's true, I want to put a plus in the column. If it's not, I want to put a minus in the column. And click on OK. And I think I did that right. Let's check here. Plus if it's a profit, and a minus if it's a loss. OK. so. That is good. So let's copy that all the way down. And then let's go back here and uh, mark that off. And format the shares as a whole number with a comma in zero decimal places. So select that all. I want a comma, but I want zero decimal places. Okay. Format um, the total purchase or the purchase cost and the current price with a dollar sign in two decimal places. And there's actually two ways to do that. So um, you can either do this, which is probably the fast way to do it, or you can, and that gives you accounting. You can also go up here and choose currency, and since it didn't specify, all it said was you need a dollar sign, uh, that's fine. So mark that off. And uh, format the total purchase value, total current value, profit or loss with a dollar sign in zero decimal places, and don't forget the totals at the bottom of these columns. Okay, so. We're talking these three numbers right here. And I'm going to hold the control key down and select these now because I don't want anything in here for formatting. And I want those with a dollar sign as well, but I want zero decimal places on those. 
and I want the percent numbers to be, um, oops, grab an extra. Let me see, uh, percents with one decimal place. Don't forget the number at the bottom. So let's go over here and uh, these are all percents and control click on the one down there at the bottom and let's make that a percent but I want one decimal place so let's do the increased decimal here and now we're good make the totals roll bold now let's make the whole row bold click over here and either do a control B or click on the bold up here Put a bottom double border below the row numbers in the totals row. So those are the numbers. So do a control click on the 100% here. And that's a border. And I want a bottom double border. They've got names. There's a bottom double border right there. Click off of it and we've got a double line underneath. And right align the columns. Um, K through C, including the headings, so K through C, or C through K. Um, right align. Whoops. Center align category and note. So here's my category. Here's my note. Do a control click on the second one, and we want those centered. And change the name in the header to your first and last name in 10 point Arial. Make all columns as wide as they need to be. Let's back, yeah, let's do that one first. Uh, this one's kind of messed up. The rest of them look okay. Whoops, this one's not wide enough either. So if I just do a select them both and then double click on the right here, and it didn't do the word category for me, so I'm going to have to make that a little wider on my own. I think sometimes it has problems with uh, um, cells that have the word wrap feature turned on. Okay, so I've done that, and um, then I want to uh, put my name in the header, uh, go to Print Preview, Center it, turn grid lines off, and make sure it'll fit on a single page. So let's go do a Print Preview. And um, I can do the orientation right here, change it to Landscape. And it does not fit, so I want to do some scaling here. I want all of the columns on one page. And there's a couple of other things I can only do here through page setup. And uh, those are uh, grid lines, which is on the sheet tab here. And header and footer. And I'm going to do custom header here and put my name on the right side. Click on OK. Click on OK. My grid line should be gone. And I put it in the footer. I think I was supposed to put it in the header. And we can go to our custom footer here and we can just uh, drag the mouse over that and delete it. Click on OK, click on OK. And that takes care of sheet one and that's a good place to stop. And we will continue the rest of the practice test with another, um, another video.